This is Ms. Kidman, and this lesson is going to be on simplifying radicals. Now, remember, a radical is like a square root sign or cubed root sign. It looks like this, and it has two parts to it. We have our radican, which is the stuff inside, and then we have the little number on the outside that tells us what we need. So say, for example, we had the cubed root of 27. This 27 on the inside is what we're trying to simplify. And that cubed root tells us how we want to simplify it. Now, this idea of simplifying radicals is super important because as we start looking at functions, as we have to factor, we want to be able to simplify these radicals so that we can factor, we can distribute, we can do things like that. So let's take a look at simplifying radicals. The way that we're going to do this is by looking at the prime factorization. So what that means is we are going to divide these numbers up into the smallest numbers they can possibly be, or their prime numbers. Using these prime numbers, we can then group the numbers together and pull them outside of our radical. So let's look at an example that's pretty straightforward, the square root of 25. Now we all know that the square root of 25 is 5, right? 5 times 5 is 25. But for this example, let's do the prime factorization. 25, well a number that divides into 25 is 5. That's what I'm going to do first. Take a number that divides into 25. 5. What number times 5 equals 25? Well, that's going to be 5. Now, I want to check to see if these numbers are prime. 5 and 5 are both prime, so I'm going to stop here. Now I'm going to circle the numbers in a pair. So remember that when we have the square root of something, really, we should have a 2 right here. It means we need 2 of something to pull it out of our radical. But in math, we're lazy, so we might not write it. So in this case, I circled those two fives. So because I have two fives, I can pull a five out of my radical. And there's nothing left, so that equals five. We can do the same thing here with the square root with two times the cubed root of 64. So we're going to break this down. What's a number that goes into 64? Well, eight times eight is 64, right? We need a cubed root, so this doesn't work, so we want to break it down into its prime numbers. So what's two numbers that multiply into 8? 2 and 4. 2 is prime. What's two numbers that multiply into 4? 2 and 2. What about 8? 8 breaks down again into 2 and 4, and that 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. Now this 3 here tells us I need groups of 3 to get pulled out of that radical symbol. So I'm going to look at the numbers that I have here. So underlined in green are all of my numbers that I can look at. And I want to circle those in groups of three of the same number. So here I have a group of three twos. And here I have a group of three twos. So those three twos, that tells me that I can pull a two out of my radical. Notice there's nothing else underlined in green left over that isn't circled. So we can pull everything out of that radical. And as we pull things out of that radical, we're going to multiply the numbers that we pull out. So there's already a 2 outside of our radical here. I'm going to multiply that times this 2 that I'm pulling out, and then that times this 2 that I'm pulling out. Now we have no other numbers left, so that's where we end. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And that's what that simplifies down into. Now, these ones all worked out nicely, but what if they don't reduce completely? We're going to do the same thing. And remember, based on the number that's written in the under, with our radical, that's the pairs that we're going to circle. So let's take this square root of 150. The square root means I need pairs of 2. So some numbers that 150 divide into, well, 2 and 75. 75 factors into 3 and 25. 25 factors into 5 and 5, right? 5 times 5 is 25, 3 times 25 is 75, 2 times 75 is 150. There we go. So all of the numbers that I just factored out are now underlined in green. I have a 2, a 3, a 5, and a 5. Now, I want to circle any sets of 2 of the same number. So there's only one 2, so I can't circle it. There's one 3, I can't circle it, but there are two 5s. So I'm going to circle that 5. Now, that 5 is going to come out of my radical. That 2 and the 3 have to stay in because they didn't have a pair to help pull it out. So when I write what this equals, I have a 5 on the outside 
And then that's going to be multiplied by the inside. And the numbers on the inside, we're going to multiply together as well. So I have a 2 left on the inside and a 3 left on the inside. So now we're going to simplify those by saying it's 5 times the square root of 2 times 3, which is 6. So that's how we would simplify it if it doesn't reduce completely. We're still going to do that prime factor. So we're going to factor it out as much as we possibly can till all of the numbers are prime or can't divide anymore. And then we're going to circle groups of whatever that root is. So if we have the square root of, if we have a square root, circle numbers in groups of two of the same number. If it's a cubed root, we circle them in groups of three. If it's a sixth root, we're going to circle them in groups of six. That's how it's going to work. Now, let's take a look at an example of when it might be not a square root, but one of these other roots. So let's take this sixth root of 896. So we're going to factor that into its prime factorization. So that number is divisible by 2. So I'm going to do 2 times 448. And then 448, well, that's divisible by 2 as well. And that's going to give me 224. And 224 is divisible by 2. And that's going to give me 112. 112 is divisible by 2. And that's going to give me 56. 100, or 56 is divisible by 2. And that's going to give me 28. 28 is divisible by 2, and that'll give me 14. And 14 is divisible by 2, and that'll give me a 2 and a 7. Now, 7 is prime, so I can't keep dividing that. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to underline in green all of the numbers that I can possibly circle. Now, notice those bigger numbers there, that 14, that 112, we broke it down into smaller pieces. So we're not going to include those, just the smallest pieces that haven't been broken down. Now, I want to circle if I have six of a number. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six twos right here. So I'm going to circle all six of those twos. Now there's one two left over, but it doesn't have a set of six to go into, and a seven that doesn't have a six. So those are going to stay in, and I'm going to pull the two out. So as I simplify this, the two comes out of my radical times the sixth root of what numbers do I have left? Two times seven. So then as I simplify it, I get two times the sixth root, two times seven is 14. So times the sixth root of 14. So again, we're gonna break it down into the smallest pieces possible, those prime numbers, and then we're gonna circle those prime numbers in groups of the size of our root. So in this case, it was the size of six, and then multiply the numbers that are left over inside. Now, that's how we do it with numbers. If we have variables, we also are going to address this. With variables, it looks just a little bit different. So let's take a look at this one in the middle here. When we have, we have 100, the square root of 120 times a to the eighth times b to the seventh times c to the sixth. We're going to break this down into its simplest terms. So let's start by just looking at this 120 and let's factor it all the way out. 2 goes into 120. 2 times 60. 60 can factor into 2 and 30. 30 can factor into 6 and 5. And 6 can factor into 2 and 3. Okay, so 120 has been factored. These are the elements that it factors into. 2, 2, 2, 3, and 5. So we have a square root here. So we can circle those. And I have a set of two twos here. But then there's only one, two, one, three, one, five. So none of those get to come outside of our radical. Now we have to look at our a. a to the eighth is the same as saying a times a times a times a eight times. So that's what that is. b to the seven, the same sort of thing. It's b times b times b seven times. And then our c to the sixth, the same way. There are six c's being multiplied together. So now we have those all factored out. We have it broken, broken up. Now with our variables, we're going to do the same thing. We need them in sets of two. So I'm going to circle all my variables in sets of two. So I have two a's here, two here, two here, two here. Got two b's, two b's, two b's. Oh, this b right here is left over. You can see it there. That b is left over. 
two C's, two C's, two C's. So now I have all of my groups of two of the same circled. Now to simplify it, I'm going to pull everything that's circled out. So I have a two, I have an A, I have an A. So here's my two, A, I have an A, I have another A, I have another A, I have a B, another B, another B, and I also have three C's. So those are all going to be outside of my radical. Now what about inside of my radical? Well, I have a two, I have a three, I have a five, and I have that last B. So notice this is all spread out and broken down. Now I want to simplify this so that I can write it more simple. I want to simplify this. So I have two. If I have a times a times a times a, we can write that as a to the fourth. b times b times b is b to the third. c times c times c is c to the third times the square root. Two times three is six times five is 30. b. So that's how that breaks down. We want to break it down into its smallest possible pieces and then circle whatever number of those our radical has. So similarly, let's do it again, but now let's do it with these ones. Now, the, notice this is a cubed root, but I also want you to notice that we have a negative right here. Now, when we have an odd root, so like a cubed root, a fifth root, things like that, if we have a negative inside, we can actually pull it out. So in order to do that, we're gonna factor this, but we wanna factor it using negative numbers. So 54, well, I know that 54 is the same as nine and negative six. Nine times negative six is 54. Now, neither nine or six, negative six is a prime number. So we wanna factor these again until they get into their prime numbers. Now this negative six, I'm gonna factor it into a negative three and a two. The reason why I choose the negative three is because I want something that I can pull the negative out. So this negative three here, the reason I chose negative three is because I know nine is not divisible by two, but nine is divisible by three. So I'm gonna break that down into my negatives. Nine is the same as negative three times negative three, right? Because a negative times a negative is a positive. So that's broken all the way down there. And we have negative three, negative three, negative three, negative three, negative three, two. Now let's break down our variables. I have an x, 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 x. I have seven y's. And I have nine z's. One, two, three, six. And I know it seems tedious, but it's so helpful to write it all out. So now that I have it all written out, I want to circle. I need groups of three of something. So here are three negative threes. There's only one two, so it's going to be left alone. I have a group of three x's here. Oh, and notice there are two x's left over. Here's a group of three y's. Here's another group of three y's, but we still have a y left over. Here's a group of three z's. Here's a group of three z's, and here's a group of three z's. So notice I have a negative three, I have an x, I have a y, two y's, and then I have three z's. All of those ones written in blue, all of those circles are gonna get pulled out of our radical. And then everything under, underlined in just green and not circled is gonna stay in. Now let's write that new radical here. We have negative three times x times y times y times z times z times z. Okay, so that's everything outside of my radical. Then I have that times the cubed root of everything that stays inside R2, an x, an x, and a y. Now I want to simplify those. And the way I'm going to simplify those is just by writing it out. So here we go. We've got negative three times x times y times y times z times z times z. Well, negative three will stay the same. Our x will stay the same. If we have two y's, I can write that as y squared. Three z's is z cubed times the cubed root two times x squared times y. There you go. That's how that simplifies out. So 
a reminder, as we simplify these radicals, what we're going to do is we are going to break them down into its smallest pieces or do something called their prime factorization, where we break it down into the smallest numbers it can. We're going to break down all of our variables. So instead of it being x to the fifth, it's x times x times x times x times x. And then we're going to circle the groups of the same number or variable based on whatever our root is. So if it's a cubed root, we're going to circle groups of three of the same. If it's a fifth root, we're going to circle groups of five of the same. And then we multi everything that's circled gets put on the outside of the radical. Everything that isn't circled stays on the inside. And we multiply those all together and simplify them. And that is how we simplify radical expressions.